have chosen to worship with us today. Now as we reflect on this day, I should give thanks to our Lord.
Our scripture for today comes from Matthew 21, verses 18 through 22. Now, in the morning, as Jesus returned to the city, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves, and said to it, Let no fruit grow on you ever again. Immediately, the fig tree withered away. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How did the fig tree wither away so soon? So Jesus answered and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also if you can say to this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, it will be done. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. Esta escritura de hoy viene de Mateo 21, versículo 18 hasta 22. Al día siguiente de madrugada, cuando Jesús volvía a la ciudad, tuvo hambre. Y al ver una higuera cerca del camino, se fue hacia ella y no halló nada en ella, sino hojas solamente. Y le dijo, nunca más nazca de ti fruto y al instante se secó la higuera. Al ver esto, los discípulos decían asombrados, ¿Cómo es que se secó enseguida la higuera? Respondiendo Jesús, les dijo, De cierto os digo, que si tenéis fe y no dudáis, no solo haréis esto de la higuera, sino que si decís a este monte, quítate de ahí y échate en el mar, será hecho, y todo lo que pidáis en oración, creyendo, lo recibiréis. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this day today. We thank you for allowing us to be here this morning. We thank you for letting us praise your name here in the church, and thank you for our health, for, for being safe. We pray that you guide us today, that you keep us safe, and that you help us teach others about you and help others learn about you so that they can be saved as well. We pray that everyone in this room receive the Holy Spirit and that we can praise your name today. Señor, gracias por gracias por este día, gracias por darnos vida. Te pedimos que nos cuides, Señor. Que nos ayudes, que nos guíes en este, en este lugar y que todos reciban el Espíritu Santo para que alabemos tu nombre y que otros aprendan de ti. Señor, te pedimos que nos cuides de todas las enfermedades que hay y que nos ayudes a aprender más de ti. En el nombre de Jesús. Amén.
The Dartmoor Ensemble will play the familiar song entitled Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right.
I know that God has smiled on them. Anybody witness that God has smiled on them? If you believe that, go ahead and give God a hand clap of praise. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. Welcome back. It's good. To, it's just good to see everybody. All these familiar faces. It's just good to see you all. Uh, this has just been a joy to see these young people. Can you all give encouragement to these young people who have blessed us tremendously on this youth Sunday? I was working on one sermon, and the Holy Spirit moved and said, "Don't do that sermon today." And I'm glad I didn't know it was Youth Sunday, so I'm glad I have a, a sermon that is that is catered for for the youth. Amen. Uh, so can, can I take my tie off? Is Youth Sunday getting a little comfortable? It's good to just to just be here with you all and, and be here with family. It's just good to be in church on this Sunday morning. Amen. Give honor to God, of course who is the head of my life. Also give honor to you all's pastor. Can you all help me celebrate Pastor Matthew Davis? Can you all continue to help me celebrate his wife, Sister Kim Noor Davis? And they are absent. I know that they are with, they're not watching now, they'll be watching soon. I don't know if they have service out of Mississippi, but I'm sure they'll be watching uh, soon. Amen. And I'm just give, I'm give you all uh, credit and honor for you all coming to church uh, in the rain. Amen. And I know how, how some people can get when they know that their pastor is not preached, they don't like to go to church. Amen. When I commend you all for coming to church on um, this rainy Sunday morning as your pastor is absent. Also give honor to my pastor, Pastor Murray G. Martin, Home Amen. Street Baptist Amen. Church. Amen. Would you all stand the reading of God's word 
Pastor Davis told me I have three hours. But I told him I can't talk that long. So I'm just going to do two hours. Is that all right? All right. Amen. If you all would turn with me to a very familiar passage. And I hope that the familiarity of this does not rob you of what God wants to say to you all, wants God to say through me to you all on this Sunday. Turn me to Daniel chapter 3. Daniel, the third chapter. Daniel chapter 3. I will be commencing and starting at verse number 13. And I will read through verse 18 and then I'll read verse 24 and 25. Amen. Amen. To Daniel and Sophia leading us in, in devotion on this morning. Amen. Honor you all, Daniel Amen. and Sophia. Thank you all for God using you. Daniel chapter 3 verse, thir verse 13. There you'll find these words. Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king and Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? Now, when you hear the sound of the horn, right. flute, zither, mm -hmm. lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Hmm. Then, what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. All right. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve yeah. is able to deliver us from it. Yeah. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know your majesty that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Let's jump down to verse number 24, 25. These words you will find, then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, weren't there Three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, certainly, your majesty. He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed. And the fourth looks like a son of the gods. For the time that is ours to share together, I want to title this sermon, Good Trouble. Good trouble. Good trouble. That congressman, the late congressman John Robert Lewis out of Georgia penned these words many years ago and says that he got into good trouble when he was younger. When he was marching across the Edmund Pettus Bridge and when he was fighting for our voter rights and when people tried to take our, our rights away, John Lewis, Congressman John Lewis, decided to get in good trouble and fight for what he knew was right. That civil rights activist Malcolm X said, if you stand for nothing, you will fall for anything. And all throughout black history, we see people of our own race always having to take the road less traveled and take a stand for justice despite the consequence. Yeah, yeah. Former San Francisco 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick, uh, he took a knee and took a stand against police brutality during the national anthem. Yeah, yeah. And because he took a stand, he was stripped of his endorsements, yeah, right. lost his football career, yeah. and has been ridiculed by folks all for taking a stand. Yeah, right. Harriet Tubman, that heroic black woman, who took a stand against slavery and escaped slavery and led our enslaved ancestors to freedom. Harriet Tubman took a stand for what she knew was right, despite what others may do and despite the consequence. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. 
He stood up against racism and prejudices in, in this country. And he had his house burned down and his own people turned against him. And I remember once, well, I wasn't there, but on his trip to Houston, uh, many pastors did not want to associate with Dr. King because of his civil disobedience. But the former pastors, Pastor Sherman Douglas of Holman Street and Pastor Bill Lawson of Willow Avenue took a stand and stood for Dr. King despite what anyone thought, said, or did. And just a few years ago, back in 2020 during the pandemic, in all 50 countries, people took a stand against racism as, as we witnessed the death of George Floyd and folks yeah. protesting and in the midst of a pandemic and are still protesting today to what people feel should be done with justice. And those people took a stand as they protested. And it takes a lot to stand for what you know is right, despite what other people may say, think, or do to you. We come from a rich history of ancestors who, right. who stood so that black people can have the freedom that we are still fighting for. And they said that before I be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord someday. Black people are resilient. We are resilient people. And we have taken a stand, although we uh, have to face consequences, and although we have faced people trying to take us down, we still took a stand. And yes, it's good to take a stand against racism. And right. yes, it's good to take a stand for, for against police brutality. And yes, we should stand up for women's rights and take a stand and stand up for, for women being treated right when it comes to being paid in the workplace and, and all that. We should take a stand. We need to take a stand for what we believe is right. But we need to learn to take a stand as believers for God. We need to stand for what is right, but also as believers and as God's children, we are to always stand for God. I know it sounds cliche. I know it sounds like basic uh, uh, Sunday school 101, but, but basic theology, whatever. But, but we are to always stand for God. Church family, I have a question. Can you stand for God and stand strong in your faith? Yeah. Even yeah. when it's not popular, yeah. Yeah. even when it's not convenient, yeah. even when it's easier to just bow and do what other people are doing. Yeah. And I have to tell you all that there will come a time yeah. where you will have to choose between yeah. bowing for something yeah. or standing for God. Yeah. And we must know that when you stand for God, your yeah. faith will be tested. Yeah. That's right. That's what do you do? When your faith is tested. Yeah, what do you do when adversity comes and when trials come and when life gets real and when you gain more enemies than friends, when you want to give in, when you want to throw in the towel, when your friends at school may be doing what you know is wrong, but you know what is right, when families acting crazy and the economy is shaking and the job may be tripping or the teachers may be acting a funny way, what do you do? Will you bow or will you stand strong in your faith? Family, I come to tell you that now is not the time to bow. And now is not the time to turn away from God. Now is not the time to throw in the towel and give up. Now is the time to stand strong and tell the enemy, I don't care what you have against me, but I will not bow and do what the enemy is trying to tell me to do. I will stand strong in my faith. And that's all that's happening in our text on this morning. The three, I call them the three amigos. Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, they were, they were, were their initial names. They were taken captive by the Babylonians to become slaves and servants. And when these three young boys got to Babylon, their names changed to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You all know the story. King Nebuchadnezzar, he was the king of Babylon. This king of Babylon, King Nebuchadnezzar, was impressed with the strength of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and, and he put them over parts of Babylon. Mm -hmm. King Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, he had this golden image. Had this golden image that was that was made of him. And how narcissistic it could be, and self-absorbed and, and insecure. One person must be to have all these things 
that, that had to be built after them and needed to, to have their name always in the spotlights and have their names always to be called and have their names and that people have to tell them how great they are all the time and how amazing they are all the time. That is a sign of, of some narcissism and some insecurities and some, and some low confidence that you have to have, that you have to always have people to praise you every time you do something. But King Nebuchadnezzar, this evil king built this statue mm -hmm. and he commanded that everyone in the presence of this statue must bow right. and worship this image right. when the music plays and folks are to start bowing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Children of God, young people, we must learn to be careful of what and who we worship. If anything takes the place of God, you need to let it go. I'll be I love Instagram, I love TikTok, I love social media, I love hanging out. But if those things are going are going to give you joy. Those things don't wake you up in the morning. Those things don't give you strength that you need from God. You have to learn to put your trust in God and to worship the Lord our God in spirit and in truth. Because God has been too good to us. God woke us up this morning. God started us on our way. And we're to worship the Lord our God. Not just not just young people in social media, but but we sometimes can put our jobs before God. We sometimes can put a, 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 a new relationship yeah. before God. Yeah. We sometimes can put our families before God. And we have to know that those things are not first. And we must always learn to put God first. I remember a few years ago, my, my, uh, one of my close friends, she told me that she got in a relationship with a young man. And I was asking her, uh, uh, you know, all the things about him and all that good stuff. And she told me that that ever since she's been with this young man, that she hasn't had time to go to church. That he doesn't really like to go to church, so she doesn't really go to church anymore. And uh, uh, she hasn't really been praying anymore. She she hasn't really been talking to God and worshiping God as she should anymore ever since she got her new boo. And I told her, I said, I hope that relationship fails. I hope that relationship does not work out. Because when you start putting something or someone before God, God will not allow that thing or that whatever it is to work out. So you have to learn to always put God first. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. You have to always put God first. Do you have a witness? King Nebuchadnezzar. He, he strikes up the music. Mm -hmm. Mr. DJ, <laughs> drop the beat. <laughs> the music starts playing. Yeah. Everybody's dancing, wow. ready to start bowing. And everybody bows, but there are three young men yeah. that did not bow, uh -huh. that, were, that refused to worship the statue of King Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah. Their names are Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yeah. And word got back to King Nebuchadnezzar that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to bow down and worship this image. So King Nebuchadnezzar says, all right, it ain't going down like that. So he wanted to meet with Shadrach, Meshach, and he said, somebody bring me Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I want to I wanna meet these brothers who refuse to bow down and worship me. And I have to tell you all that Shadrach Meshach and Abednego, they teach us about what happens when you do not bow. Yeah. And first, I have to tell you all that I think that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego teach us that when you do not bow, you will face persecution. All right. yeah. Somebody say persecution. persecution. You will face persecution yeah. for choosing to stand strong in God mm -hmm. rather than bowing. Choosing God over the world may not be popular, That's right. but you will face persecution. That's right. That's right. When adversity comes and life hits you and when it's not easy or popular, mm -hmm. God will see where you stand yeah. and who you stand with. Yeah. 
when it's popular to, to do the when it's the popular thing to do and, and you want to fit in and, and, and uh, when it's when it's the popular thing to do and you want to fit in, it's not always good to do it. Right. When it's not popular and you stand for God, you will not always fit in, yes, but right. God called you all to stand out. Yes. Let me tell you, young person, just because you don't fit in does not mean that you are, are, are not cool or you're not all right. Because God did not call you to fit in. God called you to stand out. And that's the cost of standing with God that these young Hebrew boys were persecuted for choosing God and choosing what was right despite what everybody else did. All right. Something got a hold of me. I was trying to figure out if everybody was bowing down, how is it that they were able to see that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego we're not bowing down. Right, Isn't it something that people always try to try to worry about what you're doing, try to worry about your business and what you have going on, what you're not doing, and what you're doing, and they're not doing it themselves. That's right. That's right. That's right. We have to be careful of those curious, nosy, no good folks who are not doing what they are supposed to do, and, and, and uh, but they're more concerned with what you're doing. So King Nebuchadnezzar, he talked to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And he says, listen now, word on the street is that the music is playing and you're not bowing. Make it play, make you're not bowing to my statue. And I don't like that now. I got this image so that everybody in, this, in, this, in Babylon could bow down to me. I got this image so that everybody can worship me and they can, they can praise me and to bow down to me. Yeah. So I don't like that you all are not doing what I say. Uh -huh. So I'm going to tell Mr. DJ, uh -huh. crank it up one more time. And if you do not bow, you will be thrown into the fiery furnace for not obeying my commands. So King Nebuchadnezzar says, Mr. DJ, yeah. drop the beat. <laughs> and still, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they still refuse yeah. to bow. Right. So King Nebuchadnezzar said, all right, y'all want to play games. I, I got a game for you all. King Nebuchadnezzar said, so go get that fiery furnace out and go get it, go get it hot. Go get it ready because they are going to go in there, and he said to turn up the fiery furnace seven times hotter. Yeah. Then he said, I also want you all to get the strongest soldiers, mm -hmm. the most the most strong soldiers, mm -hmm. to go and take them yeah. to the fiery furnace. Yeah. Yeah. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, yeah. they didn't bow. No. <laughs> they didn't bow their heads. They didn't give in to what, what the popular thing was to do. Uh -huh. They didn't give in to what they saw everybody else was doing. Uh -huh. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego yeah. says, King Nebuchadnezzar, mm -hmm. we don't mean no harm to you, brother. <laughs> but if you do throw us in the fire, right. uh -huh. the God we serve yeah. is able. Yes, Let me say it one more time. The God we serve yeah. Is able. The God we serve is able. I'm waiting on you all to get with me. The God we serve is able. The God we serve is able. The God we serve is able. And I'm glad that God is able. Does anybody know that this morning that God is able? Yeah. Amen. God is able. God is able to heal. God is able to deliver. God is able to mend. God is able to set free. God is able to provide. God is able to make your enemies your footstool. God is able to give you joy. God is able to give you peace. God is able to wipe your bleeping eyes. God is able. 
Amen. 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 We're gonna come back. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna holler in a second. But God is Amen. And I came to tell somebody that whatever it is that you need from God on this morning, that God can do it because He is able. Now unto Him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask for this, according to the power that works within us. God is able. Whatever you may be going through, church family, I want you to know that God is able. God is able. God is able. Now what's able is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the, before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. God is able. Not only Will you be persecuted for not bowing? But when you do not bow, you have to trust that God still has a plan for your life. That's my that's my second point. You have to you you'll be persecuted, but you also have to know that God still has a plan for your life. Knowing that God has a plan for your life while you are on your way to a fire is a true testament yeah. to your faith. Watch the text. Verse 17, it says, God is able to deliver us. God is able to deliver us. But verse 18 is where you have to, is, is, is where you have to really have faith in order to, 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 to know this. Verse 18 Verse 17 says, God is able to deliver us. But verse 18 says, but if God does not deliver us, if God does not deliver us and that fire takes us out, we still have the faith in God and will not bow to your king. It's not that God cannot deliver us. It's not that it may not be in his plan, yeah. but every now God is a sovereign God. Yeah. God can do what God wants to do yeah. when God wants to do it, yeah. however God wants to do it, if God even wants to do it. Right. So it's not that God cannot, yeah. but it may not be in God's plan. Yeah. And it takes major crazy faith to say, but if not, yeah. you got to have been you have to have seen some things in order to, to say, uh, uh, if not. You have to be able to, to, to have experienced some things to be able to say, but if not. God, let me get in this dream job. Let me get this dream job. But if not, I still trust you. God, let me get into this school. But if not. I know you still have major plans for my life. God, let this man or this woman be the one. But if not, she was not my type anyway. God, let this sickness go away. But if not, I will still praise you. I am going to be good regardless because I serve a God that is able to do it. But if not, I know that God still has a plan for my life. You have to have been through some things in order to shout. Uh, but if not, you don't have to get it. You don't have to. You don't get that type of faith overnight. You don't get that type of faith uh, 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 by just reading. You don't get that type of faith by just reading. We have to experience some things in order to be able to say, "But if not." I remember back when I was a child. We used to, uh, uh, in the drill, we were, we were on the drill team. We would travel all around the city and all around the state. And we, would, we didn't have iPhones. We didn't have cell phones or anything. And uh, all the things that we did to keep us entertained, we had to be our own entertainment. We had to be our own entertainment. And I remember uh, what the things that we would do on those van rides and those bus rides. We, we would sing songs, but sometimes every now and then, we would, when we were younger, we would mock some of the young, some of the adults uh -huh. when they would start shouting. Yeah. 
we would mock some of the adults they had when they would praise and the way they would run around the church and the way they would start shouting and the way they would start yelling and hollering. That's we, we used to do all that kind of stuff uh, on the van when we were children. But I cannot tell you all that as we got older, we became those same folks that were shouting. You can't tell us to sit down. You can't tell us to be quiet because we've been through some things. We've experienced some things. We've witnessed some things and we know that God is able. But if not, God still has a plan for our life. And we know that God is a great God because we've experienced some things. And we know that God has a plan for our life. Let me, let me rush to the end and tell you all how the story plays out. The story plays out and tell you all, and I'll take my seat, that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are, they're tossed in the fire, they're bound, and the fire is seven times hotter. And the men who carried them to the fire, this is crazy, the, the, the men who carried them to the fire ended up being the ones burned and died. The ones who are out to get you end up being the ones getting entangled and end up going out first. And these three men are now in the fire and King Nebuchadnezzar gets up out of his chair and says, look, didn't I throw three men in the fire? And they said, yeah, King, what, what are you talking about? We, you threw three men in the fire. And King Nebuchadnezzar says, but I see four men walking loose and unharmed. And I see Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But I also see someone else in there. And the fourth looks like a son of the God. Now, some theologians suggest that they were, they were not just aimlessly walking around in the fire, but they were walking around the fire with joy. Yeah, right, right. Walking in the fire with joy. Yeah. Walking in the fire yeah. with joy. And that's a word for somebody at New Beginning Church that some folks can shout when they get out of the fire, but it takes real faith to shout while you're still in the fire. So I want to tell somebody on this Sunday morning, don't wait until the battle is over to shout right now, because in the end, you will win. Church family, can you have joy in the midst of your battle? Can you have joy in the midst of your fires? Can you have joy in the midst of your struggles? Can you have joy in the midst of your pain? Now notice that God did not save them from the fire. But we have a God that will get in the fire with you. And that's my word for somebody on this Sunday morning. That if God does not bring you out, God we serve will get in the fire with you. And that's my last point on this Sunday morning. Not only will you be persecuted, not only does God have a plan, but we also have to know that we'll always have God's presence. And is there anybody that wants God's presence on this Sunday morning? The Son of God was in the fire with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they will be in the fire with you too. And some things that God will make you go through. God does not always bring us out. But sometimes God brings us through. And the writer of Isaiah says, when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord, your God. Yeah, you know I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil because God, God is with me. God will get in the fire with you. Is there anybody on this Sunday morning that's been through some fire? I 
I've been through some financial fire. I've been through some relationship fire. I've been through some depression fire. I've been through some rejection fire. I've been through some sickness fire. I've been through some job fire. I've been through some death fire. But I have good news for you on this Sunday morning that God knows how to get in the fire with you. So when you get in the fire, your soul ought to be burned. Baby, burn. Burn. Baby, burn. And that fire that they thought would harm them really helped them. You thought it would break you, but it blessed you. You thought it wouldn't it would take you out, but God took you up. Is there anybody here that's grateful that God does not save you from it? But God will get in it with you. How do you deal with the things that you're dealing with? God got in the fire with me. How are you dealing with sickness in your body? God got in the fire with me. How are you dealing with family issues? God got in the fire with me. How are you dealing with problems in your job? God got in the fire with me. Is there anybody here that's their testimony? That God got in the fire with you. God, God always bring you out. But God will sometimes get in the fire with you. And I'm grateful that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire. They were under harm. They didn't smell like smoke. With all the hell that we've endured, we won't look like what we've been through. And can I tell you, three men came out of the fire. But what about that fourth man? Where's that fourth man at? That fourth man is still in the fire. And he's waiting for when you go in the fire again. He'll be with you in the fire. He'll be with you in the fire. And I'm glad that God will keep you. He'll preserve you. He'll protect you. He'll keep you as you go through the fires. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? I said, won't he do it? Is there anybody on a Sunday morning that's grateful that you lift your hands toward heaven and say, God, get in the fire with me. God, get in the fire with me. God, get in the fire with me. I'm glad God's will get in the fire with us. I'm glad trouble won't last always. I'm glad we've been made endure for a night. But joy, joy, joy comes in the morning. Yeah, yeah. Won't you do it? I said, won't you do it? Have you tried them? somebody who's been in a fire situation. There may be somebody who's been dealing with some fires in their life. But I come to tell you that we have a God that'll get in the fire with you. You don't have to walk on this journey through life alone. It won't always be easier. But I can tell you with God things will get better. So I want to tell somebody, if you're looking for a church home, I want you to walk out. If you want a relationship with this Jesus that we 
that we've been singing about, have been praising to, have been praying to. I want you all to walk out and experience the goodness of Jesus. So if you're in need of a church home, if you're in need of, of salvation on this morning, I dare you to walk out. Is there one? He will bring you out. Is there one? Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. I know he can. I know he will. Yes, yes Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Well, church, it is offering time. It's a time where we can all participate in worship. It is offering time. As the officers can move, there are several ways you can give. You can give on Zelle at lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. You can give on Zelle at lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Or you can mail your tithes and offerings to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. You can also give in person as the, uh, as the uh, ushers have been passing out their envelopes. Amen. Let's pray, and then we will stand for our offering. Amen. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for these gifts that you have given to these people, to your people, oh God. We pray right now that you will bless everyone who has is, who is given on today. We pray for those who had intended to give but did not have it to give on this Sunday morning, oh God. We come right now just praying that you continue to bless our finances, that you will continue to open up a window and pour out a blessing that we will not have room enough to receive. Now, God, we pray right now that these tithes and these offerings will be used to glorify and edify your kingdom. And we give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. In Jesus' name, I pray and ask it all. Amen. 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 Do all please stand and follow the first impression ministry from the rear to the front.
Friday night music classes. <coughs> music classes including keyboard, xylophone, handbells, African drumming, steel drums, etc., will be offered at NBC on two Friday to, on two Friday nights per month, starting Friday, April 28th at 5 o'clock p.m. for students ages six and up. Please see Sister Carolyn Davis for more information. <coughs> March and April birthday celebration. Our March and April birthday celebration will be on next Sunday, April 30th, immediately after service. Everyone is invited to attend. Bible listening and journaling. You are listening and journaling through the Bible for 2023. Don't forget to listen every day. Please remember those in our prayers. Johnny Woods, Deborah Pickard, Al Brinson, Nicole Davidson family, Terrance Miller, family of Carton Woodson, Angel Rodriguez, Vivian Islaha, Denise Porter, Raymond Alfred Jr., Billy Banks, Kevin and Katrina Whitlock, Beverly Wallace, Omar Galvan, Ed Brandon and family, Joe and Marlene Studevant, Jacqueline Torres, Dorothy Sellers, families recovering from natural disasters, laborers for the harvest, protection in schools, and world peace. Thank you. Let's pray for those on the prayer list. Would you all close your eyes and bow your heads with me as we pray for those on the prayer list. Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. We come right now just first, before we ask you for anything, we just thank you for everything. Thank you for waking us up this morning, oh God. Thank you for starting us on our way, oh God. Thank you for a roof over our heads and for food on, on our tables, oh God. And we thank you right now for all the great things that you have done in our lives, God. We thank you that all those things are made not where we want them to be, oh God. We thank you that you are still a great God and we still give you great praise, oh God. So God, on this Sunday morning, we come right now just thanking you that you are a God who is able to do all things but fail. So we come right now lifting up all these names on the prayer list. God, we thank you right now that you are able to heal. We thank you that you are able to deliver. We thank you that you are able to set free. So God, every name on this prayer list, you know their name by name. You know whatever situation that is that you may be facing, oh God. So we come right now to spread you will step into their situation. That you will help them, oh God. That you will heal them, oh God. That you will mend broken hearts, oh God. That you will fix situations, oh God, as only you can. God, we don't put our we put our, our trust in doctors, oh God. We put our, put our ultimate trust in you, oh God. For we know that you are a God that can do all things but fail. So we come right now putting our faith with your power and believing right now by faith that you are able to do it, God. So we believe right now. So we come right now telling you to, to do it, oh God. Fix it right now, oh God. Heal right now, oh God. Deliver right now, oh God, as only you can. So God, we come right now praying that you will just do it right now, dear Father. God, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We claim victory for every name on that prayer list, oh God. They will have a testimony that, you, that it was nobody but God. So we thank you right now. We praise your name. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And it's in Jesus' name I submit this prayer. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, church family, let's go ahead and let's stand. And let's recite the mission vision statement you are ready yes. all right we are uniting the church strengthening families supporting schools and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus Jesus said and I if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. John 12, 32. Amen. Let's go ahead and benedict out of this place. Father, we thank you for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard, and what our hearts have felt because you have been in this place. Now, may the love of our God 
the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, the love of our Savior Jesus Christ, rest, rule, and abide, henceforth, now, and forevermore, until we're able to meet again. And all God's children said, Amen. 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 God bless you all. Have a great week.